Hey everybody, welcome back to another improv installment. Um, I just want to go over something that really isn't necessarily improv, but is always the, the first place I start when, when students come to me and want to start to do jazz uh, piano. Um, it's funny, we all think of voicings and, and like uh, different kind of harmony things or improv things, but, but I always start with the time and the groove first. Um, the big motivation, I think, and inspiration for that was um, one of the teachers at University of Miami where I studied, Vince Maggio, would always have us do this thing that I'm getting ready to show you. And I think he said that he studied with Oscar Peterson as a, as a young student, and this is what Oscar had him do. So I don't know who taught Oscar this, but um, it makes sense that it would be a commitment to the time since Oscar was uh, so grooving. So, um, so they, he called it, my teacher called it swing scales. Um, so I just have beginning jazz students start here. And granted, this isn't the be all end all. There's ways that you have to vary this down the road as you, you in, integrate it into different uh, types and eras of jazz. But this is a really good place to start because um, we all know there are people who play classical piano um, and then they play jazz stuff and it just doesn't quite sound the same as when a jazz player does it. And I think this is uh, totally due to um, the, the feel and the swing feel, which is, which is something that you can, you can really um, ingrain in your students and in yourself uh, when you go to learn this. So, um, so, so basically, it's, it's a very simple concept. Um, you're just going to play a scale and change it from an eighth note to, to a swing eighth note. So instead of this, here you go. So you're just going to change it to, to the triplet feel. So really what we're doing is one a la. So it's one a la, two a la. So the first and third partial of the triplet is what we're doing. So. So I'll go through the whole process. That's pretty much it. But, but where you really start to bring this to life is when you talk about the more subtle aspects of it. So first of all, a lot of students have trouble landing on the third partial of the triplet. Um, a lot of us, I should say, not just students. So a good way to do it is to put your metronome on um, either a triplet or like a fast 3-4 or waltz feel. So it would be that like that, and you just go and just slow it down. It's not, um, I have students sometimes do this at like quarter note equals 25 or 30. So it's like so, so you can just keep going slower until they feel it. Um, and then, <clears throat> then you can speed it up. I think usually you get around, um, 180 or so, the eighth notes tend to straighten out a little bit. Uh, that might be a whole separate video of how to play at faster tempos and, and keep a swing feel. Um, but this is where you start, really slow, and just making sure that you, you're landing on the first and third partial of the triplet. Um, once you get this, you can vary it a little bit later, like you know, certain piano players like Chick Corea might have a more of a straight feel than a, than a triplet feel. But, but once you have this as a point of reference, it's easy to kind of um, grow into that, that aspect of the variations. So now, um, the, probably the most important part of this is the articulations and the accents, the, the phrasing. Um, a lot of times, like if we're playing a jazz tune, we've just had traditional lessons we get kind of enamored with the syncopation and make everything way too choppy and stiff. So like... That might be the way that a traditional, somebody who has traditional piano lessons comes in and play like a Charlie Parker melody. Um, but if you listen to people who, who come, out, come at it more from a jazz angle, it'll be a little smoother. So it's the accents and the articulations, the phrasing, um, that you can make a big difference. So, so real quick, all this is at the beginning is you just want to make sure that they hit the, the, the first and third partial of the triplet and also play 
extremely legato. So make sure there's no gaps between the notes. The other thing is, is you want to, this is going to be contrary to what, if, you, if you've played in jazz bands, to what they have the big bands do a lot of times. A lot of times they have the big bands do this. They accent the third partial. But if you really listen to Oscar Peterson and like Wynton Kelly and the really grooving piano players uh, that are known for their swing feel, they actually do it opposite. And this is what my teacher said came, you know, straight from Oscar is that you really lay into the downbeats and then you ghost the upbeats. So it's. So you just have that going all the way through and what, what you want to try and do is from the bottom of the scale up four octaves is make every single one the same, every single downbeat the same, make sure they're all consistent and make every upbeat consistent. So that way you, you start to develop your own time, your own time feel and your own groove that fits this style of music. Um, and you just do that in every key and work tempos from I'd say quarter note equals 25 or 30 all the way up to like 180. And so rather than jumping in and trying to start teaching a bunch of voicings and chord stuff, which, which is something, they're, they're really important. And, and I do get to that really early in a, on the game, but this is, this is where it all starts. Um, and then another good step would be to pick like a Charlie Parker melody that's got a long line of eight notes. Even that blues I just played. <laughs> There's going to be some times in bebop where you shift the accents, but just finding uh, finding things with with lines, so so the students or you get used to accenting the downbeats, um, and then we'll we'll do another video where we talk about like where you shift the accents and stuff in a bebop head or bebop line, um, so you can you can experiment with that. But at the beginning, a lot of these swing scales um, will get um, get you or your students sounding like um, they really know how to play this kind of music, even though you're just working on the time field. That's really the the pillar of everything else you do when you play when you play jazz piano. So hopefully this helps.